been averaging better than 6,700 a game this year. They might have as many as eight or more, and they're noisy already. UAB, seven straight wins, and they ranked as high as 39. Xavier, on the other hand, they've won 10 in a row. They've only lost eight times in eight years here, five under Pete Gillen, and they're the number 25 team in the nation, according to the Associated Press. JP, UAB, three and three on the road. In this arena right here, Xavier has eight losses, 91% winning record in the friendly confines of the Cincinnati Garden. Well, it's friendly for the home team, right? It's unfriendly to the visitors. Look how far out Jordan is in, and he ices it with a three-pointer. Good way to start for Gene Barta. A lot of pressure on the Xavier perimeter people to guard the outside shooters of UAB. Kicked out to Jamal Walker. He wants to match it, but he's off the mark. Picked off by Rembert. UAB is, they're going to invite Xavier to shoot that perimeter shot. They're going to double inside like most people will because of Strong and Hill. Almost a steal for Walker. Kramer, they in effect play with two point guards, UAB, when Bearden and Kramer are on the floor together. Rembert, 15 feet away. Kramer, Bearden really take care of the ball. It's a plus because they're both point guards, as you said, JP. Bearden doesn't get the roll. Strong gets the first of what should be many rebounds. Michael Davenport. Crucial for UAB, how they handle the transition game of Xavier. Can they get back quick enough? They have to shut it off, according to the UAB coaches. Fans are still on their feet, awaiting the first basket. Outside the freshman, Glad that's it. That's a shot UAB well offered to Xavier. They would rather give that up than let it go inside to Strong and Hill, and we can all understand that. Beard now. Some pressure from Pete Gillen's crew. They'll play about 80% man-to-man, about 20 zone. Barrett was going against Glatton, almost picked off by Kramer. A 3-2 lead here for UAB. Kennedy driving baseline. He can hit the baseline shot, although he does it there, as well as the outside. Rembrandt doesn't get the roll, but a good follow-up. That's the guy I feel, JP, is the key to the game. Larry Rembert, if he gets off to a good start, has a good all-around game. UAB could really be in this one. Tyrone Hill to the outside. Gladden the freshman. Outside to Walker. This is the toughest matchup for UAB against big players of this kind of quality all year. Davenport found the opening. Not good help that time by UAB. Really so conscious of those two big guys in at the block, they let the cutter take it to the hole. Barrett picked up by the freshman Gladden from Lorraine, Ohio. A non-conference game. This is the first time in the history of the two schools that they've met each other. That was a mismatch. Kramer against Strong. Rembert put it up and draws a foul on Tyrone Hill. And if we think back, Mike, to a game you and I did last year, Hill got in a foul trouble early, and he was not a factor in that loss to Wichita State. Xavier can ill afford to get Tyrone Hill into foul trouble. Part of UAB's game plan, according to Jimmy Harder, assistant coach with UAB, is to take it at the big guys. Now, some people wouldn't do that, JP, but UAB has decided with the body and the physical play of Rembert, they're going to go right at him, right at Hill and Strong with Rembert. Kramer to the outside for Kennedy. Down low on the right-handed hook. No good. The rebound of Tyrone Hill to Davenport. Slowing it down against Kramer. The rebound margin for Xavier is immense. It's almost double figures. But in rebounding stats, both teams very close on the year. 41 plus for Xavier. 39 the other way. Hill misses the shot. Strong stripped of the ball. Kennedy, fast breaks it out to Bearden. A 5-4 lead, it's a one-pointer for UAB. Kennedy in the paint, the running left-handed layup is good. So a lot of room that time for Kennedy. Kennedy will find a way to score while he's on the floor. He'll either shoot it, he'll take it to the hole, but he's got the credit card from Gene Bartow. Gladden picked up by Kennedy. Walker pulls up, missed on the jump. Strong the rebound, right back. Walker takes it inside of the big man. Good idea, but it got away from Strong. Pete Gillen really concerned this week with his guards, his perimeter people. They're not taking the ball inside to the big guys, JP, as much as he would like. He's really concentrated on that in practice. He's lost his voice in the process. Kennedy with it. We have two of the most unhealthy coaches going on today as we look at turnovers with Xavier, a couple already. Both Gillen and Bartow biting the battle 
feeling the effects of the cold and some fatigue as well this part of the season. Here's Kramer missing the shot. They both kind of kidding. We said before the game they won't be too hard on each other, but I'm sure the game will change that as strong in a battle for the rebound. The foul is going to be called on Larry Remmer. We will see a lot of that, JP, as the ball game goes on. Rembert, a very aggressive player, a guy that's got a very good body, as does Derek Strong. Both guys go to the boards. 16.07 to play. First half, it's a 7-4 UAB lead. Slowly bringing it up is Walker. Underneath, and Tyrone Hill. That's what, Pete, first couple. that's what Pete Gillen wants, JP. What happened with UAB is they tried to play that time. Hill straight up. I tell you, he's awful good. It's very, very hard to do. You're better off trying to double down. Kramer against Walker the other way. They look for Ong. He's tied up by Strong. Quickly was almost cut off by Derek Strong underneath. We've got an official timeout on the floor. It's a one-point lead here for UAB, but it's early. We've only played about four minutes. While some regard driving as a necessity, Volks lead against Xavier. Still in the first half of play, there's Tyrone Hill with a couple of points and some rebounding figures. It's tea time. It's been tea time here for four years now. You don't get to be number one rebounder in the country by not going to the boards. He's also breaking all of the records, if not almost, at this school, Xavier. Xavier's shooting what they've been shooting all year at 50, but UAB is way down at 39. Here's a steal by Strong. Three on two if they hurry up. Underneath the big man, blocked and a foul on Andy Kennedy. It'll be his first. Kennedy made the, made the foul. He did what he had to do to keep Strong from getting an easy two, but Kramer was trapped with Walker and Strong, big and little. The one that bothered him was the six foot ten Strong. He not only makes the steal, starts the break, the big guy gets in at the tail end, he's rewarded. He was the key, his size on Kramer. Kramer not used to that type of size and quickness at the same time at the midcourt line. Strong misses there. He's a good free throw shooter though at 86%. At the start of this game, he's six points away from joining the Xavier 1000 point club. A guy that really takes a secondary role in the offense still does an excellent job for Pete Gillen down low at the block with his back to the basket. Rembert, now that trap again, but this time it's broken to Bearden. All the way across to skip past Kennedy. Made it come for three and a foul. It's a potential four-point play. UAB handled that very well. They broke the pressure. Kennedy, Kennedy spotted up in the corner, and they found him. When you're guarding a guy like Kennedy, you know he's a three-point shooter. You have to know where he's at. Xavier just a little slow out of the press in finding him. Averaging 43% from three-point range this year. He's better than 45 last year. At the free throw line, he's very strong as well. He excels at 90%. That's money in the bank. Good combination when you shoot like that from the field and you shoot so well at the foul line. 11-7. It's a four-point UAB lead. Biggest lead of the night. And another turnover. That's three on Xavier very early, so you know that Pete Gillen's not happy, and you can see him there. Didn't turn out as Pete Gillen would like, but credit strong. He felt the pressure, the double team coming, and looked to reverse the ball to the other side of the floor, which was exactly what he had to do. Kramer got around a Rembert pick. Outside a Rembert. Now it's Kennedy. Picked up by Davenport. If they match up man to man, that could be a good matchup between Davenport and Kennedy. Probably no one else in this club could match up as well with Kennedy. They have to go to the bench. Try to get a defender off the bench, but Davenport staying in the game, out of foul trouble, is important for Xavier. Bearden around the pick with Rembert, no good. I thought Rembert was going to do the pick and roll against him, but he didn't get back into the play. Turnover number four for Xavier. Are they pressing a little bit? They're not used to the TV exposure. They're not used to that number 25 rating, and Pete Gillen wants to make sure that their, their heads stay into the game. Well, I'm sure he's concerned about that, but I don't think so. This team was successful last year, has been the NCAAs. They're on a roll this year. They played on some type of TV, maybe not nationally, but that shouldn't bother JP. Kennedy. Kennedy hits for a couple. Kennedy has eight points out of the 13 on the skip pass. Glad will try the baseline against the two big men, and he missed on Og, but he drew a foul. So Alan Og will have his first. Glad and very quick. You don't close out on him and keep your body between him and the basket. He'll get that baseline with the quickness. The freshman, a guy that Pete Gillen is very, very pleased with. They have high hopes for him in, in the Xavier future. Substitution coming 
into the lineup. It's going to be Albert Rogers, one of their best players off of the bench. 56% field goal shooter. Averages 11 and a half a game. Good defender, does go to the boards. Good athlete. And the free throw is good from Gladden, who has been a 73% shooter. They'll make another change. Kramer is going to go out, and George Wilkerson, the freshman, comes in. They've got a couple of good freshmen on this UAB squad. Gene making some substitutions early, maybe to get a couple of his younger players into the feel of the game and rest some of these proven veterans. Coming back the other way now, it's Kennedy. To Bearden. So they gave Kramer a rest, and the big man, Og, is out as well. Rogers. Outside here. Rogers will test them early defensively, and he hits his first jumper. Albert Rogers has a couple. It's a 15-9 game. It's six points, the biggest lead for either team. And actually, UAB has gone all the way. UAB got off to a good start defensively, haven't been hurt by the big guys inside yet. Did he walk? Strong underneath. Now Xavier loses it again. There's a timeout on the floor. We have 13.31 to go. Xavier taking that timeout. They're trailing by six. They want to talk things over in the early going at the Cincinnati Gardens. For those considering a Toyota camera. It's an exclusive presentation of Creative Sports Marketing in association with ESPN. Any use rebroadcast or other transmission of this game without the written consent of Creative Sports Marketing and ESPN is prohibited. Turnovers have been a big problem for Xavier in the early going, Mike. By our count, it's five already after about six minutes. JP, on the year, Xavier only has 12 more assists than turnovers. That's not a good ratio. It's a concern to Pete Gillen. That time, Strong couldn't get his hands on the ball. And I'll tell you what, I've watched the kid play the last couple of years. He has very good hands. Kramer coming back. UAB with the lead as it's tossed out. Wilkerson, a very quick freshman, one of the highly regarded players in the state of Alabama. Gene Bartle has done a nice job recruiting a lot of those Alabama kids. Rembert with a miss. He followed his own rebound, though. Rembert kicks it out. Kennedy for three. Well, he was hot. He had made all of them before this. Two for two. When Rembert does things like he just did, shoot and follow, get the rebound, it's nothing but plus for UAB. Down low, Tyrone Hill uses the glass. Came up, missed it on his second chance. And it's taken back down by Rogers. Colin Parker getting ready to come back into the game. He's the guy that started games last year, and now is the sixth man. And it looks like they could use that kind of spark as Rember takes it on the baseline. Blocked by Williams. And a foul on the freshman Aaron Williams who came in during that last commercial break. Williams has very live legs. Excellent lift. Comes over from the help side. There he is. Good help. Rembert, though, aggressively draws the foul by turning the body and attacking the basket. Now, with Parker in, JP, guy, as you mentioned, started last year. They had hoped that he would be in the starting lineup this year, which would allow Jamal Walker to come off the bench. Pete Gillen feels that Walker gives them the spark off the bench, really adds something to the transition game. And that's a substitution that they just made with Walker sitting out. Remember, a 60% free throw shooter. Made his first one. Not bad for 60%. Can two of them here. And it's an eight-point lead, the biggest lead for UAB. They've led all the way as Gladden takes it out. We'll see what Parker can do. Last year, he hit for 37% from three-point range, second to Stan Kimbrough. They can really miss the Stan Kimbrough this year. Quality point guard was an integral part of their team last year. On the lob, down low, tee time. Tyrone Hill. The lob against UAB's zone. When you're in that zone, you have to be aware of where the big guys are at. Tyrone Hill, Derek Strong. That time, Xavier threw over the top of the zone. Remember, 16-footer is no good. Coming back the other way. Gladden leading it. You think they might be going or should be going more to the big men with Og sitting in the bench? He called it very correctly. Hill's turnaround. Now he's got six, and we may see Og back. Hill too big for Larry Rembert inside. He just turned and shot the basketball. Have to kick Hill off those blocks, make him go out on the floor. I would think during that last timeout that that's what Pete Gillen was saying. Remember, pounded inside, especially with Og sitting. But William Devon is getting ready to come back in. He's a 6-9er. On that baseline, Rogers up strong, and he missed. Blocked, but they're going to call a foul. Williams. 
He's got some good shot blocking abilities, a lot of potential, but just a little bit off at the start here. This is probably the earliest he's been involved in a game, and certainly one of this magnitude. The athletic ability of Elbert Rogers shoots from one side of the basket. The spring in his legs takes him to the other side. He stays with it. Now, most guys quit after one. Elbert Rogers stays with it. William Devon checks in. He'll wear 52. Larry Rubber gets a breather. So the two leading rebounders from UAB are on the bench, and they're not in foul trouble. Three fouls total for the visitors, four for the home side as Rodgers misses at the line. Where he's been averaging 66%. As good an effort as Rodgers gave UAB, he's got to be able to convert these foul shots in a game like this against a quality team like Xavier. Otherwise, they could come back and haunt them. Another substitution getting set to check into the lineup is Maurice Brantley, a freshman. So Brantley comes in. Defensively, Mo Brantley, the coaching staff of Xavier Field, he's a guy who could match up with Kennedy or Kramer or Beard if they're in the game. He's a good defender. He's got excellent size to go out on the perimeter and defend. Well, they take Davenport out to bring in the freshman Bradley. So the freshman getting some quality minutes here early for both teams. On the outside, Xavier in the blue and white. Looking to set up some picks outside. Here's Parker on his drive. The pull-up, no good. The rebound is jammed in. Nice basket by the freshman Brantley. 18-15, all of a sudden, it's a three-point game. It was eight. Xavier, good rebounding team, but about 65% of the rebounds come from the two big guys. Brantley can make up that with rebounds like we just saw. Left outside now for Wilkerson. Six-nothing run for Xavier. Down low, Rogers. And let's see, underneath there's a foul. Is it Tyrone? They were looking at first, I thought Williams, if it's on Williams. But now they're putting it on Hill, so let's check it out. I had thought originally it was on Williams, but they're going to give it to Hill. I was with you. I thought it was Williams, too, but they put it on Hill. Part of UAB's game plan was to take it right at the big guys of Xavier. They've been successful in putting two fouls on Tyrone Hill. That time, Rogers comes off the bench. He has aggressively attacked the basket for a guy his size. Rodgers at the line will make the first one. So he has a total of four points, and it's up to four points in terms of the lead. UAB out in front from the opening tip. Rodgers had a great game last year in the NIT against Connecticut. He was perfect. One for one at the line. Seven for seven from free throw land. Plus one block shot and one big rebound. All off the bench. Here's Brantley. Fake the outside shot. On the bounce pass to freshman. The error on the turnover comes back. Wilkerson fast break, and there's two points in transition for Kramer. Good fast break. Wilkerson, the freshman, handling it very well. Kramer filled the lane well for a guard without the ball. He's used to having the ball. On the outside again, it's Brantley. 21-15. The pull-up jumper from 15 is good. Oh, Brantley showed a lot with that move. Four points for Brantley, and it's a four-point lead for UAB. Xavier's three freshmen really playing well. One starting, two off the bench. Kramer leaving it off. George Wilkerson picked up by Gladden. Outside for Kramer, faking on strong. Xavier likes to change defenses to change tempo to throw the opposition out of their offensive tempo. Parker gets a rebound up for Gladden. Well, they can cut this lead down to a couple or one if they go for the three-pointer. And that'll be as close as they've got. Bradley try to throw it while they get the ball back. That's six turnovers, though, for Xavier early, and now they're going to bring Walker back in. If you're going to really be conscious of the big guys inside, you have to either double down at the block or you have to pressure that ball. Don't let the passer see inside. That's what UAB did that time difference in the game really is those points off turnovers eight for UAB and the ball is going to belong to Xavier a little more experience with Walker in and Gladden out as Pete Gillen looks on Ted he doesn't have too much of a voice today neither does Gene Bartho because they've both been very sick 
for points off turnovers and total turnovers, a stat we have to really watch. Been a bugaboo to Xavier so far this year. Both teams are averaging like about 15 a game. Walker outside. Shot clock has not been a factor in this one up to this point. Bradley with a head fake goes up again and he forced a foul on Devon. So UAB will commit their fourth team foul. Bo Brantley really has become an active player this afternoon. Good head fake. Got Wilkerson, the other freshman, freshman against freshman, off his feet. Bo Brantley so far off the bench, giving Pete Gillum what Pete would like to see. Activity, points, aggressive effort. They give the foul to Wilkerson, and now Andy Kennedy will check back in with that three-point range. Wilkerson will go out. So Kennedy comes in, a transfer from North Carolina State. He's back from major knee surgery. Remember that big brace he had to wear last year? And he's still very mobile with it. Maybe people feel he's coming, still coming from that knee injury, but dramatically better this year with his lateral movement. And we will notice that in his drives to the basket. Last year, he very hesitant going to the basket a lot. This year, he will go to the basket. And the big man, Alan Ogg, returns at seven foot two inches tall. A real test for the big men of Xavier. We keep talking how it's a test on one side. It's a test on the other side as well, as Bradley cans one of two from the line. He has five points. 21-18, a three-point lead. That's as low as it's been. Kramer against the quick hands of Walker. Former Michigan player. Transferred after a year there. Here's Devon, the running right-hander is good. So William Devon has a couple off the bench. Walker put a lot of pressure on Kramer, but Kramer up there is steady and sure. Ball handler. Five-point lead for UAB. Brantley. To join us late, Tyrone Hill sitting on the bench with a couple of personal fouls. Here's strong, and it was blocked. Devon get in there. Nice block. On the lead pass, strong. Good job not to travel off that pivot foot. And a good job after having a shot blocked. He stayed right with the game. From the outside, missing on the three-pointer, but a foul underneath before it on Devon. Shot taken from the outside by Colin Parker. You mentioned the shot clock not being a problem in this ball game. Both teams really like an up-tempo game. So after a steal, a quick transition game resulted in a basket and a foul, almost a basket and a foul for Xavier. Williams sits it out, and for Xavier, once again, it's tea time as Tyrone Hill, who, as Mike said at the top, really has rewritten the record books here at Xavier. And on the opposite side, Rembert counters with Devon going to the bench with one foul and a couple of points. Probably a defensive substitution by Gene Barto. Is going to be called for the foul. I thought he got a clean block on that, but apparently not. That's going to be his second personal foul. UAB cannot afford to have Aug in foul trouble. Leads the team in block shots. One of the top in the nation. It's like a clean block from above, but we didn't have the angle with the body, JP. Well, at the start of this game, he was 41 block shots away from an all-time Sun Belt record. Rogers will come in for the big man, Og. And I'm sure Gene Barno wanted to get a few more minutes out of Og before giving him another breather. That was quick. No question at all. was strong. And, and Tyrone Hill inside. Alan Og needs to get a lot of minutes this afternoon. Well, Derek Strong now has a couple of points. Gene Barto has been here now for 12 years at UAB. People probably don't remember. He succeeded the legendary John Wooden, and he was 52-9 and nine in a couple of years at UCLA. Unhappy during his term at UCLA. Left to start this program from scratch. Davenport is back in. Parker sits out. We're back at the line with Strong. One of the better field goal percentage shooters in the MCC. And he makes the free throw good. For a big man, 86% at the free throw line. Presses on. There's the trap. But they break it to Kramer. Bounce pass Kennedy for three. And Andy Kennedy is there again. He has 11 points. Coming out of that trap, Xavier, if they're going to use it successfully, they have to find Kennedy. Down low. Strong on a power move in the paint. Derek Strong has five points. And it's a 26-22 game. A four-point lead for UAB. Strong just too big for Elbert Rogers that time in low. A little confusion down on the floor. The horn just sounded. This is the old Cincinnati Garden. There's a lot of history in this building. They've renovated it quite a bit. And we've got a great crowd on hand to watch this game today. 26-22, just a four-point lead now for UAB. It was eight. It's the dream, right?
Xavier capitalized off their half court pressure earlier in the ball game. This time, Davenport moves over to stop Kramer. Kennedy wide open. Davenport has to stay with Kennedy. You have to know where he's at and even let the guy with the ball go to the basket, but don't let Kennedy spot up wide open. Xavier out shooting UAB. UAB shoots better at home like a lot of teams do. They're at 52% at home, 45 plus on the road. Kramer won. Mike Xavier's key to winning this game has to be with points on the inside, and so far they've done pretty well with that. Excellent. Of 22 points. 14 have come out of the paint area, which really, if you're Pete Gillen, you have to love. If you're Gene Barto, you have to look at it and say, I have to find a way to stop this inside game if I'm going to pull this game off as a win. Turnover, Xavier has not had one of the last few minutes. There's the jumper from him. Well, that's not out of his range, folks, at least not on that play. He's got range to the foul line, JP. Soft touch can face. The beauty of Hill is he plays well with his back to the basket and can face like we just saw. So you've got to come out and take him. Remember to Kennedy. And hit the line, but a good break there for UAB. Kennedy wasn't sure whether or not to play that ball. Mo Brantley, the freshman for Xavier, matching up with Kennedy. A pretty good size, good athletic ability. Watch if Xavier really applies pressure on the outside, trying to watch those guards break up their line of vision. Inside, UAB will try to take the ball right at the big guys. Jackson and Kramer are out. Gurdon comes back in. Reverence in there. There's a long toss out. And Pete Gillen said, whose ball is it? The ball belongs to UAB. I think Pete was obviously using a little body language. His ball all the way. <laughs> Kennedy now to Bearden. UAB with 16 fouls, Xavier five. So UAB one away from putting Xavier in the bonus situation. And Strong commits a foul on the baseline. That's going to be his first foul. Strong has had five points in this one so far. Hill with eight. Remember, a real tough assignment for Derek Strong inside because Remember, not as tall, but probably wider than Strong. Plays tough at the block with his back to the basket, using that big body of his. Andy Kennedy will inbound to Bearden. Bearden driving against Jamal Walker. He'll bring it out. Bearden wants to see some rotation. Rogers trying to set picks down low for Kennedy. A long one is good, but it's only two points for Andy Kennedy. 13 for Andy out of 28. You said it right, setting picks for Kennedy. Bo Brantley, the freshman, maybe not used to having a pick like that set on him. Davenport for three, but he missed that one. He's missed two of his there. Here's Walker taking it right back in. He dished it. And underneath, they're going to call it one on Walker on his drive. Jamal Walker loves to penetrate, get into the paint. Sometimes he'll shoot, sometimes he'll pass it off. If anything, at times, a little wild once he gets into the paint. He can create shots or passes in midair, but that time created a turnover in terms of the foul. 28-24, UAB on Thompson's the opening tip. They had built it up to an eight-point lead. That's the high. Kramer around the double pick. Nowhere to go. Now he'll find an open man in Wilkerson. On his drive, pulls up. Now he gives it off to Rogers. On the bounce, he lost it as he put it down. Coming back the other way. This is Davenport on his drive. Slow dish out to Bradley. Slapped away. Well, both teams have done it. Three on one the other way. Wilkerson to the trailing Bearden. Nice dish underneath, and there's Wilkerson. He missed. Rembert. Foul going up by Bradley, and maybe a little frustration because Bradley had the ball down the other end, and he can't feel too good about that. One turnover followed by another. The fast break, Barry Bearden really does an excellent job. Kramer, the back slap, which he likes to do. Now watch Bearden get the ball in the middle. He'll look the defender off to the left and go to the right. Excellent job by Barry Bearden. The freshman has to get that shot to go down, though. You cannot get an easier shot than what he had on the fast break. That was a shot of Bradley on the bench as Rembert is at the free throw line. Rembert will make it. Andy Kennedy is who they're looking at. I didn't see what had happened to him. A knee in the thigh, I believe. The last the two trips ago before he came out, that took a knee to the thigh. Last game out, Rubber joined the 1,000 point club for UAB. He became the seventh player in UAB history to reach that mark. People around UAB feel this is one of their better defensive teams ever at UAB under Team Bartow. The best in quite a long time. 
Land on the bounce pass baseline. Hill's jumper, no good from about eight feet. Powerful rebound underneath, that's no good. Hill went up and then lost it. They get it back at a new shot clock. The Musketeers work it down low to Strong on the dish. Walker! Excellent pass, Derek Strong. A lot of big guys struggle with making that interior pass. These two big guys don't, particularly Strong. Beard picked up now by Gladden. Senior against the freshman. Beard, the number two man all time in assists. Rogers with a miss. Strong underneath. Xavier has a chance to narrow that gap. Every time they get it down to four, something happens. He'll put it down. And it went on Hill. That's his third. I wanted to wait until the body's good enough to see the way that one's going to be called. And that's a costly one for Xavier. Not a good foul if you're a Xavier fan. He'll run so well. He gets out ahead of this break. There's Hill, 42. Away they go. He's out running the break, which he should be. Walker, nice pass. Hill maybe should have pulled up, shot the bank shot. If he had it to do over again, would probably have done that. It was Kramer, wasn't it, that took the charge? Kramer got in front of the big guy. And what Kramer did, he did it out of the paint, down at the block, which is where you want to take the charge. Well, Hill goes out. Dwayne Wilson coming in. A freshman from Milwaukee. He was a medical red shirt last year. 6'8", 245 pounds. So he's not a small player, but he's no Tyrone Hill. Very few players are. Wilkerson on his drive. Too hard on that pass on the baseline. Good idea, but too hard for Rodgers, and they love it here in Cincinnati. Not there on that UAB bench as Gene Bardo gets ready to make another change. With Hill out now, UAB will continue to attack that basket, maybe even intensify that effort. That time, Wilkerson got into the paint too easy. Xavier with nine turnovers. Not a figure they want before the end of the first half, but there's still 4.42 to go. Part of it, maybe some freshman errors, but really on both sides. Flat now to Wilson. Outside, Walker on the lob pass, knocked away, but it goes out of play. And now, maybe to take advantage of Hill being out, they're going to bring in William Devon, the 6'9", 225-pounder, who was a transfer from the University of Alabama. JP, I've, I've been impressed so far this afternoon with the pressure defensively UAB's applied. They've really been hustling right up on top of the Xavier Perimeter player. To the outside. Now inside of the drive, and it's going to be good. Count it. Davenport drew a foul underneath as well. And that's the first time that the foul has gone the other way on a drive. Just after you say something good about a team and its defense, the freshman Wilkerson allows Davenport the avenue to the basket. That's where it all started. The foul doesn't happen if Wilkerson defends out on the basket and keeps Davenport out of the paint. So Devon had the foul. That was his second one. Or he didn't have to foul, but he had to come in there and exert some pressure, and he did foul. But now Andy Kennedy, in the three-point shot, returns, and he replaced Wilkerson, the freshman. Wilkerson, a guy who's going to be a very good player for UAP. Kennedy, a guy who has proven he is very good. Good substitution by Gene Barto. Davenport, can you believe this, Mike? In two years, he's improved 30% at the free throw line. The best, best almost 90. The best three-point shooter on the Xavier team. Of anyone that does something special, he said just practice 500 free throws a day. That'll either make you a good free throw shooter or a one tired player. Great move on the baseline by Rempert. You did it right. Excellent move. Good hang time, Larry Rempert. That's the kind of thing that they like to see more often from Rempert. Throughout his career, he was highly touted, but he's been plagued by some inconsistency. But that's the Larry Rempert that they recruited for UAB. It's a three point lead now. Xavier is getting closer to UAB. If I had a Z, it'd be silver. No, black. And I'd take it to a racetrack. Hold it. Nah, drive it cross country. That's what I'd do. Wait, Germany. Yeah, now that'd be epic. Running a Z flat out on the Autobahn. Too bad you can't drive to Europe. It began as a game. It turned into a battle. And now, it's out of control. But Bold 2, coming January 28th. 
time, it's war. Many men have sensitive skin that's irritated by shaving. After Aftershave Skin Conditioner is clinically proven to soothe and relieve razor-scraped skin. Sensible care for sensitive skin. After. By Maynard. Alonzo Mourning and Georgetown blocked away of Boston College. Then it's a conference championship rematch between Duke and North Carolina on ACC Big East Wednesday at 7 Eastern live on ESPN. That's a great doubleheader coming up Wednesday. Georgetown, one of, I guess, three teams still unbeaten. And coming up after this one, Virginia and North Carolina. Last year, Virginia won, but it's a little bit tougher to win at the Dean Dome. And that's where that game will be coming to you right after this one. Back here, it's 32-29 in favor of UAB. They've led all the way, as many as eight. That's been the biggest lead. Turnovers have hurt Xavier and points off turnovers so far. Kennedy leading on one side, Hill on the other. The foul underneath. Not the points that Hill has put on the boards. It's impressive. It's the fouls that UAB has been able to get him to commit that could hurt Xavier in the long run this afternoon. Albert Rogers is checking in and checking out is Devon. So Devon has had some foul trouble. That's three on him. A couple of them on Alan Ogg, but the big man on the other side, Tyrone Hill, with three. Derek Strong, second in team scoring and rebounding. UAB now has the three three-point shooters back in the game. Kennedy, Bearden, and Kramer. Kennedy had at least one three-pointer in 46 out of 48 games. Talk about consistency. Strong, consistent there at the line. He's got two. It's a one-point game now. This is as close as it's been. Let's see what that UAB defense does when they come back the other way. And also offensively, if they can maintain the lead. Xavier picking up the tempo defensively, pressuring the ball on the perimeter. Bearden. Kennedy. Kramer trying to set a pick. To the outside, Bearden for three. It's short. Rebound, he got it back. Everyone stood around, and it came right back to Bearden. Without Hill in there, Xavier off in the rebounding strength. Rodgers will leave it out for Kramer. Jack Kramer on his drive and pass out to Kennedy. Now Kramer again. This is three-point range. He misses. Well, they're cold from three. Coming back and penetrating is Walker. I thought he had lost it, but they've got something underneath. Walker looked like he was up with nowhere to go. Walker really had his mind made up the minute he got to midcourt that he was going to take this ball to the basket. Kennedy, if he had it to do over again, probably would have stood his ground, looked to take the charge when the penetrating Jamal Walker heads to the basket. Second personal foul. Each team now with seven team fouls. And checking in is Wilkerson for Kennedy. So fouls have been a factor in terms of resting players, but even before that, both coaches went to their bench pretty early, and this one especially towards the freshman end. Gene Bartow sitting Kennedy down. Doesn't want to take a chance to pick, pick up that third foul here with about two minutes to go, which could come back to Harding in the second half. Free throw is missed. It's put back down on the floor. Good job by Davenport. And now it's Walker. Got the new shot clock and a chance to take the lead for the first time in the game. Davenport outside. One of the leaders of this team, one of the tri captains with Strong and Hill. Davenport up. Yacht used the glass and it went home for him. He's got seven. First lead of the night. With Hill out, Davenport and Strong have to pick up the slack. They've got to do the outside and the inside game with Hill on the bench. And just like they did at the start of the game, they're on their feet here in Cincinnati. Rembert outside now to Bearden. The lead changed with about 2.30 left in the first half. UAB handled by as many as eight. Outside Rodgers. Nice fake. Put it back down to the floor. But couldn't get by his man, Wilson. UAB, Larry Rembert inside. They're looking to go to him. This is the lowest the shot clock has gone down to. At 10, Bearden for three. That quiets the crowd. Very Bearden. Timely three. Coming back in travel. The experience of the UAB guards, Bearden, Kramer, Kennedy. That time it was Bearden showed in knocking down that late shot clock three-pointer. Glad now will give it up to Walker. 35-33, UAB up by a couple. A minute 50 away from the end of the first half. Walker around a big pick. 
went to dish it off as he went out, but a foul underneath. Rogers may have held him on that drive. Walker showing a lot of signs now, taking it to the hoop in the last couple of minutes. Walker loves to go to the hole. Rembert passed up on taking the charge on Walker. Whenever he has a ball in his hands, defensively, you ought to think charge, stop the penetration, get in his way. Rembert that time took a pass on it, and Walker gets to the foul line. And the senior from Murraysville, Pennsylvania, Bob Kester, makes an appearance at 6'8", 235, and Wilson will sit it out, Dwayne Wilson. So with a minute 44 to go, Walker's at the free throw line, where he shoots 64%. If you're a Xavier fan, JP, you have to feel pretty good right now with Tyrone Hill sitting out and your team down two with a chance to go one down and your big guy, the guy that's rewriting all the books here, on the bench. Actually, they had taken the lead with Hill out. They've tied it now. Two free throws for Walker. And now UAB brings it up with Beard. Between Beard and Kramer, they have a better than 10 assists. It's quite a mark. On the baseline, Rodgers missed. Strong. Strong in the rebound. Here's the fast break pass. Devin Port missed. Rebound. Walker's got it. Xavier loves to leak out either a guard or the small forward, Michael Davenport. That time, Davenport beat everybody down the floor. Couldn't get it to go down, but Walker followed. The key was strong, was looking for it. As soon as he took that ball down, he knew he had somebody breaking. The touchdown pass, and even though Davenport missed, Walker with a good follow-up. Jackson. Outside Beard, now outside again with the freshman Jackson. The rebound, Xavier pounding the boards by nine. Here's Rodgers, he was wide open. No surprise, though, that Xavier has the advantage. Nine points, or nine rebounds more. There's your tied-up score with 44 seconds left. Walker with it. Flat. Strong, wide open at the block. That time, Gladden passed on him. He gets it there. He's tough to defend. Going to work the shot clock a little bit. Now down to the baseline off. Strong. That's a tough turnover with less than a half minute to play. Really is, in light of the fact that he was wide open just seconds ago, and they passed on getting the ball into him. That time, Davenport really forced it in. Three players sitting out. Three fresh ones come in. Og, Rembert, and Kennedy go in. And now Kramer's coming in, so they're changing ball. They want some leadership out there, the veterans, for the closing 29 seconds. Leadership and that shooting ability of the trio of Kennedy, Kramer, and Beard. They're going for the last shot. One of those three will take it. Kennedy's so tough to mark, not only because of that great shot, but he's also 6'8", so he's got a height advantage in whatever position they play him at. Beard on one side, Kennedy on the other, Kramer with the ball. That's that uh, triple threat three-point group. Kramer took something in the stomach, maybe an errant elbow or arm, and he is down. He looks a little bit winded. Now that's one way to knock out part of that three-point trio. Take the wind out of him. Doesn't look like he's going to have a chance to get a shot. Watch him go through the lane. I couldn't tell from that angle. You could see all we caught was him grabbing his stomach. Yeah, it didn't look like anyone had hit him there. There's Kramer. So let's see if Kramer's all right, if he's going to be able to stay in. But right now, Gene Bartow goes to the bench again now. Wilkerson comes in. So does Albert Rogers for Og and Kramer. Well, they've got the ball this far now. Let's see what they do. Maybe set up some picks for Kennedy? Oh, most certainly. Beard Kennedy are shooter. What UAB has to be careful of, JP, is they don't shoot and not get back and let Xavier get a cheap basket right at the end of this half. Beard with eight seconds of the clock. Took a quick glance up at it. Trying to go around Kester. Powers it up. It's short. Strong had it, lost it, kicked around, and that's the way the half will end. With a 37-37 tie, Pete Gilligan put away the glasses for now, but as you said before, I think he's got to be happy with the first half. Sure does. You might as well put two zeros up on that clock, JP, when we start the second half, because at 37-37, there was a lot of energy out here in this half, but we start all over again in the second. Well, it was the inside game versus the outside game, but also fouls could be the big story. When we come back for the second half, that's what we might be talking about. Right now, it's still tea time. Let's go back to 
Chris Fowler. Okay, thanks, JP. Tee time put on hold, though. Xavier winning the battle of the boards, but foul trouble for Tyrone Hill and for Andy Kennedy, as the guy has told you one of the stories of the second half. Let's take a look at some of the scores and highlights right now. NC State and Georgia Tech, an ACC battle. Tech coming off their first loss of the season to Duke, and NC State coming in at 12 and 2. Yes, the fans of the Bobby Cummins lookalikes are ready. First half, Tech up 15-10. Carl Brown everywhere, diving save, and that's Brian Oliver at the other end. But he goes to seven. Look at the distraction there. Mickey Hinton, Hinton rather, uh, misses the free throw. Now it's 27 20 tech. Kenny Anderson to Daryl Barnes for the layup right there. But not all good news for the Jackets. Brian Oliver lands on the foot of Rodney Monroe, goes down. He had to leave the game at that point. Basketball, Alabama Birmingham at Xavier is brought to you by Nissan, built for the human race, and by Budweiser, Beachwood Age, that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. The sophisticated looking guy behind me there, Tyrone Hill of Xavier. Now we have seen some wacky promotions to promote guys for All-American teams and Heisman trophies in football. Usually it's the videos and the posters. We haven't seen anything quite like this before. Get out the fine china, get the hot water ready. It's tea time. Ah, tea time. Tea time arrives whenever Tyrone T. Hill serves up his body bashing power game to Xavier's opponents. He would like to be an All-American. Problem, exposure. Xavier is rarely seen on TV, plays in an underappreciated conference, and hasn't had a wire service All-American in 30 years. To many who vote for postseason honors, the Musketeers might as well be the Mouseketeers. Solution, Sports Information Director Tom Iser's Tea Time campaign. So far, more than 7,000 Tea Time tea bags promoting Hill, mailed to media and coaches. Well, what do you think about this? this whole marketing campaign with you at the center. You like it? It's okay, it's a recognition, and you know, with the tea time, tea time thing is something that, you know, it has a little ring to it and brings recognition for myself and also the team, and you know, I think it's a good idea. But has the Tea Time promotion gone beyond good taste? Some of the old, old school, as some of the old school writers are going to, to look on it as, you know, showboating or, you know, being too flashy and, let him do it out on the court and do it on TV, you know, and prove it the old-fashioned way. Um, the problem that I have with that is the fact that we're, you know, right now we're not on national TV enough that that really is a realistic type of way of looking at it. No nonsense, Coach. Pete Gillen was skeptical at first, but he's warmed up to the campaign. We're the outside of trying to get in the door. You know, we want to get in where the Big East is, the Big Ten, the ACC, all the, the glamour programs. We want to get a little part of that recognition and we got to do a little extra to try to, to get people to notice us and hopefully have a decent team and, and have those type of uh, promotional campaigns and if we don't do it then nobody will ever see us. They'll say eggs over, eggs where, where, eggs Xavier. Iser rejected as too hokey the suggestion to mail out golf tees and photos of Hill teeing up a basketball. I just kind of did a mental sketch of that and realized that uh, I don't want to make him look like a buffoon. Instead, Hill appears in morning clothes, projecting a stylish image that marketing expert Ron Ott says works. If it's clever, uh, irrespective of uh, the content, it draws attention. That's why uh, people win advertising awards. That's what advertising agencies really are striving for is recall. You know, what is it that the uh, consumer remembers about the ad? Have you noticed that writers and fans have, have been more aware of you this year? Well, you know, I have a little fan club, and I was up in Marquette, and one of the guys said, it's tea time, you know, and I was up in uh, Rob Moore's, I mean, up at East Illinois, they said it was tea time, and it's, 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 it's showing, it's, it's coming along, it's, it's slowly, but it's, 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 it's reaching some of the, some of the people it should be reaching. How did you feel about being the focus of this kind of an unusual publicity campaign? Well, you know, I don't you know, to be marketed as a product is, you know, 
it's good, but on the second hand, you got to back that up. You know, if you can't back it up, I don't think you can sell the product. So, it's, you know, I got to go out there and produce. If I produce, then I can sell the product. But if I don't produce, I can't sell the product. Ah, tea time. Tyrone claims to be a big tea fan. And I said, you know, come on, tell me the guy wakes up in the morning, puts on a pot of tea. He did admit that it's iced tea, not hot tea that he favors. It is tea time. It was in hot water so far. Three fouls. He's been on the bench the latter part of the first half, but uh, a 37-37 tie between UAB and Xavier. Back to the studio in just a minute. Virginia and North Carolina both looking for their first win in the Xavier and UAB deadlocked at 37 all at the Cincinnati Gardens for the final 20 minutes. Let's go back to JP and Mike in Cincinnati. Fellas? Well, Thank you, Chris. It's dead even at 37 apiece, and with all the hype that we did, Mike, about tea time, it hasn't really been tea time here today because Tyrone Hill has really picked up some fouls. He's gotten three already. Well, UAB's defensive plan has worked well. They got Tyrone Hill into foul trouble, and he sat on the bench. It's a lot of time on the pine. Has to hurt Xavier's offense. You have to give UAB credit, but Xavier battling back, and they walk off the first half with a tie. And on the opposite side, we talked about the great outside shooting of Andy Kennedy. He's done nothing to disappoint. He's gotten 13 points and a couple from three-point range. Xavier really did do a good job of finding Andy Kennedy. You have to find him in transition on the half court because he's always spotting up and shooting. Well, it's 37 apiece time right now to take a look at some of the first half highlights, and we'll take you through them here at the Cincinnati Gardens. Michael Davenport, a guy who has to pick up the slack when Tyrone Hill goes out, this time with foul trouble, gets to the paint. Makes UAB pay the penalty. Now Hill, three fouls, still came away with eight points. Great hands, walls the defender off very well. Shows us why he is one of the top NBA prospects for Big Ben in the country. Barry Bearden, intelligent floor leader. Great turnover to assist ratio also shows you he can knock down the three-pointer. Three of Bearden's six points. First half stats, the field goal is a better shooting percentage by far. Xavier's 56 to 41, but the thing I know you're interested in are rebounds and turnovers. It's amazing that UAB only had 10. Not amazing, Xavier, an excellent rebounding team, right at their uh, advantage in rebounding. The turnovers, UAB, good job in transition. Xavier, not such a good job. Both teams run, push the ball up the floor. They will make more turnovers. On the plus side, Kennedy's got 13. Some pretty balanced scoring, although it does drop off af after there. But Kennedy and Rembert have been key guys, and Bearden's two threes have been a big plus for this team. And on the opposite side, we talked about points in the paint, and you can see 15 from the first two guys, and those have been in blue. Strong and Hill need to get off to a good start offensively. Davenport, he needs to get up there in the double figures here in the second half for Xavier to possibly win this game. Well, the University of Alabama, Birmingham, had at one point an eight-point lead. Xavier whittled that away, especially with Tyrone Hill on the bench. An exciting second half, though, is next from the Cincinnati Gardens. 1,400. ESPN's NCAA Basketball, Alabama, Birmingham at Xavier, is brought to you by Nike, who reminds you to just do it, and by Mitsubishi, bringing you a full line of award-winning automobiles, See them at your Mitsubishi Motors dealer. Here at the end of the first half of play, fouls may be a factor before this one is over for the second straight game on national television. Going back to last year, Tyrone Hill has gotten into some foul trouble early, and it'll be interesting to see how UAB attacks Xavier Mike if Hill is right back into the lineup, and I presume he would be at the start. Part of the game plan for UAB to start the game was to take it inside and challenge the big guys. Now, with three fouls, if they keep with that game plan early in this second quarter, that fourth foul real quick on Hill could hurt Xavier. Story of the game, Kennedy is shooting well. The team percentage, though, not very good. They've shot not as well on the road this year compared to home. Xavier on the other side have to be pleased with their comeback, but they're very worried about Hill's three fouls. Walker will start things out, and Tyrone Hill is back into the game. Davenport, who hit for 26 against Loyola, tries there from long range. That's no good, and Rember takes it down. 
Davenport is a guy who must hit that perimeter shot to take the pressure, bring the defense out off the two big guys low. Right side for Beard. They're standing and waiting for the first. Xavier Basket, as they did at the start of the first half, down low to Rembert. It's the same starting five here for UAB. Rembert, power move, and Rembert has looked strong in this one. He's got 10 points now. Excellent footwork on that move with his back to the basket that time by Larry Rembert. Down low to Tyrone Hill. Short on it, strong the rebound, missed the shot. Hill and Strong fought with each other and lost. Walker driving in, the dish down low to Strong, and he makes it count. Not a good pass by Walker that time, but the tremendous hands of Derek Strong kept that ball in play and allowed him to get the shot. Strong with nine points and seven rebounds, so while all we did was talk about Hill, we did mention at the top, though, that Strong is the kind of guy that doesn't get as much attention because of Hill, but the NBA scouts know who he is as Og turns and misses. Right inside to Allen Og, who was guarded by Tyrone Hill. That might tell you a little bit about UAB's second half plan. The jumper from the outside is good for Glad. So the freshman comes up with a big couple. 41-39, Xavier on top. You know, UAB has had no points from Allen Og in this one, and he's been averaging in double figures. Each team has four players in double figures. Og picked up some fouls early, spent some time on the bench. Kennedy forced that one up in short. Tyrone Hill, the rebound. Davenport's pass. Kicked back out. Now to Walker. He'll start his drive around the screen. The short jumper is no good. Hill blocked by Rembert. Back outside to Walker. He's got the new shot clock. Pete Gillen really concerned about getting the ball inside so the big guys would rather have it there than shooting from the outside. Kramer looked like he reached in. Let's see if it's going to be on Kramer. Or if someone else will get the foul call. It's 41-39. It's going to be on Rembert. And that's going to be three fouls. So some of the big men, some of the key players in this big set. There's Pete Gillen with the famous towel that he uses. He doesn't chew it like Jerry Tarkanian or give it uh, that kind of treatment, but he kneels on it every game. Rembert, good quickness inside, created that steal. Kramer coming back the other way. Turnovers were a factor in that first half of the play. Here's Og trying to go back against Hill. Missed it. Tough deed for Tyrone Hill. The long pass is broken up by Bearden. He'll have to save it. It was last touch by him. And everyone at the press table scrambling to hold out of their beverages. Twice down the floor, back to back. UAB inside to Allen Og, looking for him because he's guarded by Tyrone Hill in foul trouble. So far, all they've got is 0 for 2. Walker, and not able to get a foul on Hill either. Glad for the outside. Down low again, Tyrone Hill working against Rembert. Soft jumper is no good. And they try to pick Rembert or Rock out as well, but Hill already has one offensive foul in this one. Kramer. In the paint, Rembert. Nice pump, and it goes down for Larry Rembert. Sort of a quiet 12 points for Rembert. Started quickly in the first half. Cooled late. The turnaround, no good for Davenport. Kennedy, the rebound, and going over top of him was Davenport. Not too happy, probably, with his own shot selection. Tried a little too hard to good get effort that ball by back. Michael Davenport, though. Not a foul you want to take, even though the effort is there. Kennedy has possession, controls on this rebound. Ah, you want to pass on that one. Davenport, the most improved player last year, made the all MCC tournament team. Jack Kramer picked up by Gladden. 41-41. Kennedy down low. There's on the try for the third time. This time he had good position on Hill. He did, and Hill smartly stood behind him and put his arms up. Didn't play aggressively. Kramer with a tough one. Almost went underneath the press table. And for Jack Kramer, that's going to be his first foul. One of the strengths of this UAB team is simply Kennedy, Bearden, and Kramer because of their smart play from the perimeter. Hill doing what he should have done, got a hand up, but didn't aggressively jump into all because of his foul problems. He has three. Jamal Walker and Xavier down by a couple, 43-41. Xavier led in this toward the end of the first half. Here's Strong against Og. Was there body contact? Yes, sir. Strong does what you have to do inside, JP. You don't fade on Allen Ald because of those long arms. That's where he gets his blocks. Strong goes right at him, freezes him, and makes him commit, drawing the foul. 
And Alvin Rogers quickly takes off the warm-up top, and he'll be checking in, you know, for Alan Ogg. They won't fool with Ogg with three fouls. He didn't agree with that last one, but the body was there, body well, work. Alan Ogg feels that uh, Derek Strong jumped into him. And there's a fine line there, JP, whether you're really jumping in or you have enough of an angle that you can be the aggressor and get away with that. That time, the referees felt that Strong had the angle to the basket. Ogg didn't have the position. Strong, the newest member of Xavier's 1,000-point club, did it on his sixth point today, now has 10. Bidding for 11, which would tie the game at 43, and it does. Well, when your big guys sh shoot foul shots well, like Derek Strong, that is nothing but double plus for your team, because big guys, you love to get them to the foul line. They get there quicker than the guards. Kramer in coordination with Gene Bartow calling for the offensive play. Kramer to the outside. They want Kennedy for three, but that's snuffed out. Xavier in a 2-3 zone. They'll change up occasionally just to shift that tempo. Down low, they find Rogers for the jam. And Elbert put everything he had into that. Nice pass, huh? Jack Kramer Perfect. really put the money, the ball on the money to the outside away from the defender, which allowed the basket to look easier than it was. Timeout on the floor. We've got 15 15 Xavier wants to see those guys knock them down like Walker did. Kramer driving against Glad underneath. In the paint, Rupert had it stripped away. Good defense, but the ball still belongs to UAB. Walker fell back in the lap of Rembert. Rembert made a mistake, though. Put the ball on the floor, which allowed Walker to come in, JP. If he just turns and keeps the ball up, he probably gets a shot. Rembert has 12 points. A good day for UAB. Outside to Kennedy. Back inside. The two-man game with Rembert and Kennedy. He'll go up strong, but he walked. So a turnover there for UAB. That dribble I talked about just a second ago. He keeps putting the ball on the floor, which allows the opportunity to make a turnover happen. And if he just spins and sees the basket, shoot or passes, he might be better off. He was double teamed too. Someone was open on the outside. Walker picked up by Bearden. One point Xavier lead. Down low. Tough pass for Strong. Couldn't hold on to it. Too many green shirts in there. Davenport forced it inside. Xavier has to take their time and let the offense develop, take what they are given by UAB. Someone's win streak will come to an end today. Seven in a row for the men in green, the UAB Blazers. Ten in a row for Xavier after being stunned here in their home opener. There's a Robert shot, Rogers rather, and it's broken up. In transition comes Xavier. Walker leads it, kicks it outside. The jumper for three. We talk about what? the times that Walker has made some ill-advised decisions, JP. That time, he handled it perfectly on the break. This is the biggest lead of the night for Xavier at four. Kennedy, now to Rogers. To Bearden, and that has brought this crowd to life. Andy Kennedy for three. That could have quieted him, but he missed. He was two for four in the first half. Walker, the lob, and a nice rebounding effort there by God, the freshman. Not the guy you expect at the end of the alley-oop. UAB needs a timeout. They didn't defend that alley-oop from guard to guard, JP. Well, if anyone wondered how high Glenn get up, that question was answered. A six-point lead for Xavier and a smart timeout for that man, Gene Barto. will return to... Here in Cincinnati, Xavier leads UAB 51-45. All fast breaks start with excellent outlet passes. Good communication, guard to guard. Xavier has big men that run. Jamal Walker used to throwing to his big guys. Doesn't affect his timing when he throws to fellow guard and freshman, Gladden. Gladden at 18 a couple weeks ago in the Marquette game, which you called. That was his best game of the year. Underneath, it counts. A couple points for Rembert. Other score is Georgia Tech with Kenny Anderson. Leading. Georgetown has a early lead over to Paul. To remember Virginia and North Carolina in the Dean Dome. That's up next after this one. Strong to the outside. Fakie was Walker. He put it back down. Out of control as he went up. Diving towards Pete Gill. Had to get out of the way. He slid over with the towel. <laughs> While he's over there, I'm sure Pete might have a few words for him. Not a shot. He got into the paint where he likes to go. But I'll tell you what, when he got there, there were enough people that he couldn't see the hoop. Tyrone Hill getting ready to check back into the lineup. So Xavier made a little run there, that six point with Hill on the bench, right? 10 to two in the last two minutes and 15 seconds. That's the run for Xavier. 
UAB trying to counter with that. They've got Oz back in after that timeout with Rembert in there. The two big men and on the floor. It goes the other way. Tyrone Hill has been on the bench in the first half, five minutes, a little over. Second half already, and he's coming back in. He sat out uh, two and a half minutes. And all because of foul trouble. Williams, Aaron Williams, will go to the bench to replace him. Walker just took a glance up at that clock. He likes what he sees so far. Xavier's on top by four. Hill got an opening against Ogg, and he got the roll. Tyrone Hill, only ten points. Eight of those in that first half of play. Very good setup pass by Michael Davenport that time. Makes it easier for a big guy when they receive the ball and have a chance to operate. A six-point lead here for Xavier. And that one goes the other way, too. So UAB, two turnovers right in front of their own bench. The last two times up the floor, and Gene Marco not happy on the sideline. There is the foul trouble. Four players with three each, but they're concerned on the Blazers' side because they have three players. And they're two big rebounders. And if this game does stick with a lot of the inside, that's how it's going to be won. At the edge, in terms of numbers, they have to belong there to Xavier. The strongest stayed out of foul trouble. And he has been the, better, the best big man so far tonight. Davenport hit for two. He said earlier that he needs to knock him down and to pull that defense out and loosen things up for Xavier. Eight points, Xavier lead. Coming back is Bearden. Kicks it outside. Wilkerson, the freshman. Down to Kennedy on the baseline move against Davenport. Doesn't get it. It went out, though, for deflection. Strong not happy with that one. But the ball belongs to the Blazers, and more substitutions are on the way. Jackson coming in, along with Colin Parker, for each side, one each. And it looks like Kennedy's going to get a breather. And maybe Davenport? No, he stays in. UAB now, two of their three perimeter shooters out. They're going to go back inside to all in Rembert. Parker is in for Walker as Ogg is way out for the basket. Bearden three-point range, and Barry Bearden with his third three-pointer. That's all he scored today, nine points. It makes sense if you've got one of your three shooters in, make sure he shoots it. That's what happened. Davenport on the outside against the defense of Wilkerson on the baseline. Hill having a hard time with it. Kicks it out off the deflection. Davenport didn't want it, then took it and made three. That's a good way to change your mind. Davenport had a little problem getting that ball under control. Once he did, no problem finding the basket. An eight-point lead matches the biggest lead of the day. But that lead belonged to UAB in the first half of play. Here Stanley Jackson, a freshman in the backcourt. UAB Jackson and Wilkerson, both freshmen, really struggling right now offensively to find the rhythm, get into sync. On the baseline, remember, bodies up strong, but missed it against strong. And now Tyrone Hill, that's his ball, no one else. In the corner, Parker, three, and he missed that. That could have been a big three. Would have really opened things up. It's an eight-point Xavier lead now. That would have made it 11. Here's Tyrone Hill. Look at the strength of the ball control, but he missed the shot. Strong. Reverse layup missed. Another one, no. Hill. They wanted it more. Xavier got it. Davenport to Strong. And he muscles in, but he travels against Dog. Hey, Strong and Hill both dominating that basket. That sequence down the floor. Second shots, putbacks, tips. Didn't end the way they wanted, but you have to credit them for really putting forth the effort. Kramer, who is back in now with Kennedy. Both teams used their bench very early, and it was before anyone was in foul trouble. Both teams believe that they have better depth than they've had in the last few years. Each lost a key player. Stan Kimbrell on the Xavier side. Reginald Turner for UAB. Here's Wilkerson, a nice one, on the soft jump from about 12 feet out. Wilkerson's first points of the day. Glad coming back, a six-point Xavier lead. Parker outside, picked up by Kramer. Xavier's taking their time, maybe milking his clock a little bit. They're going to go inside, and they should, because they're two big guys. Glad against Kennedy. Driving in, pulls up on the baseline. He may get the roll, up, no, but a rebound underneath. Strong, and I 
tell you, he did not have good position against two big players. One of them was Og, but he got that rebound. He got the bounce. The ball bounced twice instead of once. I think Og thought the ball was going to bounce one and come off. It bounced twice. Strong to number five rebounder in the nation. Has had some big rebounds in this one. Kramer outside, a eight-point lead again. Second time that the lead has been eight for Xavier. Kramer around the Og pick. From the outside, no good. Strong again. He's got such great hands, he gets that ball under control. During this last couple minutes, Xavier out rebounding UAB 14 3. Davenport missed the three. Third off the boards, Wilkerson in transition now. UAB on the run. Late dish for Ogg. Almost saved. Great effort, but it hit the backboard. And the disappearing act underneath, we may have an injured player. Let's see who it is. Is it Parker? We'll have substitutions. Williams and Walker will come in. I believe that was. Parker or Davenport? Davenport. Davenport, who got up late. Great hustle. Might have saved that, but it did hit up underneath the backboard and went out. The rebounding edge still belongs to Xavier. You know, in one game earlier this year, UAB, you said they were a good rebounding team, and they are. They had 44 boards in one game earlier. On the other side, a record 67 rebounds. And that big game against Loyola Marymount for Xavier. Xavier strong hit 24 in that game. Tyrone Hill 20. Wilkerson missed that jumper. There's Tyrone Hill. Touchdown. And they missed. Walker had a chance. Unselfish to Parker. And what do you think about that? From our angle, I couldn't tell whether it was a good pass or not. Possibly Parker stopped on Walker, which would make it a bad pass. But I'll tell you what, UAB's worst dream right there, that breakaway, that leak out by the Xavier perimeter players happened. They didn't play it safe that time when they coughed it up. Xavier on that turn over Kennedy. Outside to Rembert. Kennedy in one game with eight three-pointers. He's not had that many chances here. Here's Kramer, left-hander. He's been off target this game. They're looking at T. Tyrone Hill. That'll be four, and you were talking about how much he's rested in this game. He may get another rest. That's, that's four with eight to go. Probably see him take a seat with Pete Gillen. Kennedy may be a little too unselfish. Gave a shot to Kramer, who was further out on the floor, and UAB didn't have many rebounders. But with that young man going out, possibly things could pick up for UAB on the rebounding side. Derek Strong is back, and he just got a little bit of a breather. Hill goes out. Aaron Williams is also in there, number 44, the freshman. Kennedy driving the baseline. He was not to be denied, so if he can't find it from the outside, he can take it in. Shouldn't have been able to go from the wing to the basket without somebody stopping to give him some resistance. Just a six-point lead now for Xavier. Walker against Bearden. Tyrone Hill on the bench with four personal fouls, and underneath, Strong drew a foul. If that's Rembert, that's four. And he might have a seat on the bench as well. well that's UAB's counter to Tyrone Hill, rebounding-wise, is Larry Rembert. Now both of them are sitting. Yep. The two leading rebounders from each side will get a chance to watch some basketball, as you will too, when we come back to Cincinnati. Georgetown and Duke in that Big East ACC doubleheader next week right here on ESPN. Here's your score, 60-54, Xavier on top. We switch from basketball to football where some of the nation's top college seniors will play in Japan. In Yokohama, you'll see some of the great players, including Mike Gundy of Oklahoma State and the great running back from Indiana, Anthony Thompson, right here on ESPN. Back to basketball and inbounded by Xavier with a six-point lead. Walker on his drive against Beard. Drew a foul underneath. Good drive by Walker. Fouls have been a story here. The two top rebounders, one from each side, sitting it out right now. Beard lets Walker get to that foul line, and that's where this youngster loves it. No one really stops and picks him up quick enough. He gets the shot off. He beats Beard. There's got to be plenty of help. Force him to leave the ground in the air. Maybe he'll turn it over. Walker at the line where he makes it count. 64% free throw shooter now has a total of 10 points. Was a starter last year, then he became the sixth man for them. Walker again, he cans two of them. So give Jamal Walker 11 points and a eight point lead for the third time for Xavier. Walker, exciting player. One thing you can say for him, he'll make something happen. Outside Rogers. Now to Kennedy with Davenport on. 
to the outside for Barry Bird. UAB only five of 12 from the three-point line. A team that has shot 236 going into the game. Derek Strong, guilty of the foul. Yeah, they've got a pretty good edge there in terms of the three-point when you compare them. 21 points a game for UAB to 12 on the other side. Pete Gillen really hasn't found that great outside shooter. Strong, good job of playing defense off the block, creating a situation where Rodgers is far enough away from the basket, maybe a little too physical. Gladden is in. Parker goes out for Xavier. Good. Watched out by Walker to Kennedy. There's Davenport very quickly on the recovery. Devon fighting up against Williams. Kick out Kennedy. Wants it there for three. He's developed the cold shooting from three-point range. Here's the long pass. And Davenport, no mistake about it. 17 for Michael Davenport. Bearden and Jackson. Jackson, a freshman, not back defensively. Xavier will run away or leak a perimeter player. Too easy of a basket. Biggest lead is 10, and Strong will take another foul. And look out, Derek Strong. That's three. With Hill having four, now Strong three. And that was not a good foul. Got into a shoving match when it, when it was out in front of everybody and not part of the action. Cheap foul could hurt Xavier down the stretch. Derek Strong, part of that one-two combination that are the number eight pairing in the nation in terms of overall rebounds. Xavier, number eight among all Division I clubs. Here's Kennedy, stripped of the ball. Davenport, Kennedy wanted a foul. Walker one-on-one. -on -one. Now help and off the fingertips of Williams. And a lot of missed opportunities today for Xavier on those fast breaks. Tough to throw to your big guy running the floor, particularly when he's a freshman. Down low, nice move, Devon, he got it, and a foul, and Williams should have a few on him as well, that's three. Well, Devon takes it right at the freshman, he's experienced player, started at Alabama, transferred to UAB, nice pass, baseline away from the defender, Williams is lost. At the line will be Devon, we talked about that rebounding strength of Xavier, and now Speaking of rebounds, guess who's coming in? The Tyrone Hill entering the game for Aaron Williams. Hill and Strong are gone next year. Aaron Williams, a young player. Pete Gillen thinks big future here. Tough shoes to fill, though, with Strong and Hill leaving. Hill twice already this year, the MCC Player of the Week. Here is William Devon. Every free throw is an important one. That's a miss, and Strong will take it off the boards. UAB had a chance to put three up on the board and also stop the clock. Missed that opportunity. Uh, that is Walker. Now it's Glad. Looking at Strong, trying to set a pick for him. Strong almost walked against Devon. Used the glass well. Derek Strong has 15 points. Quickness inside. Excellent footwork. Coming back is Bird. Ten-point lead again. Xavier on top. The crowd thought Beard walked. They turn it over. The long pass to the freshman glass. Nice roll. UAB needs a timeout. Biggest lead of the day. 12 points still in the way. Here's Glad. Cool on the fire. Glad. Really amazing that Barry Beard has popped that ball up. A guy who's excellent with the ball. Gene Barto needs a timeout. He's going to take one. Well, he's trying to get the attention of the officials, and now he's got one. They're loving it here in Cincinnati, where Xavier, after trailing by eight in the first half, has opened it up. They are leading by 14. Xavier leading it by 14, and they've started to open it up with a long pass and then the turnover. UAB crashing the boards. They're trying to come from behind. Have given up a couple easy baskets on the run out to Xavier. Now an unforced error by UAB. Bearden just runs up the back of Strong. Strong didn't do anything to create that. Results in another basket. The lead goes quickly from 8 to 14. JP. Let's update you on tee time. Tyrone Hill with 10 points and 11 rebounds, and he's not been a, a real big factor because of foul trouble, but this is the ninth time this year he's had double-doubles in points and rebounds. Davenport, big second half, 10 points. Bearded, stripped of the ball. Coming back now, it's Kramer against the quick hands of Walker. Parker, or Davenport, bumped off by the screen. 
Outside to Bearden. Shot clock down to 11. Bearden takes the three. And Barry Bearden, very cool, slugged that one. UAB is to get back in the game. They're going to pick up the tempo defensively, knock down some three. They are capable of doing that because on the year, they've hit 43%. So it's not a, something they can't do. They're not a mean ass to knock down three when they haven't taken them or haven't made them. Glad. Out of that port. Davenport on his drive, a late dish, held ball, and the possession will go the other way. Good defensive rotation. You see the area, the arrow pointing for UAB, but defensively UAB rotated all five guys. Bearden, because of his hustle, was rewarded with the steal. Now, UAB has proved they could come back earlier this year. They came back 17 to win a game. That's what that three-pointer will do for you. Kennedy to Kramer. They have three guys that can actually shoot it, although Kramer has not had a good shooting day. Bearden has. That one looked good, but it was blocked on his biggest rebound of the day. Kennedy down low to off. Bearden for three more. He's had four three-pointers today. Strong clears it off. All rotating the ball back from low to high for that three-pointer. It's part of their game plan now. Pass. They try to find Hill and thread the needle, but Rembert lost it. They want to bring Bradley in off the bench and Rogers the other way. The three-pointer just now in the last couple of years being incorporated by college teams. And teams like Gene Bartos, UAB Blazers, very effective in the way and the time with which they use that three-pointer. Bradley outside looking. Hill in there with four fouls. Glad for the outside. I'll tell you, the freshman has had, by my count, six very big points in this half, and he's had altogether ten in the second half of play. Both guards have played well. Glad and Walker offensively for Xavier in the second half. Kramer, that's three if it goes. He missed. Og the rebound. Og goes right back off the glass and missed. Strong the rebound. 72-59, Xavier. Gillen on the sidelines. Once that ball moved around, a lot of motion. Nope, that clock. Three-point lead. Pete Gillen really learned under some top-notch people, didn't he? Five years under Digger Phelps, top assistant there. A couple years under Raleigh Massimino. And collegially started out way back at the University of Hawaii. And the two assistants, or two of them, were he and Rick Patino. That's not bad. Pretty good class all the way he was uh, entered with. And probably one of those guys that comes with some great one-liners, huh? They've got a couple pages in the media guide just on his one-liners, his quotes, his quips. I love the one where he says that uh, we're not a chuck and duck offense. Some of them you need an interpreter, though, to figure out what he's saying. And after this one, you may need an interpreter because he didn't have much of a voice. He's got a pretty bad cold at the start of this game, but he's still yelling over there. Walker on the lob. Kick out Walker. That's three if it goes. In and out. Kennedy the rebound. Less than three to play. Hill felt that double team very well. Rotated the ball. Kennedy gives it up. Albert Rogers off the glass. No good. Scramble underneath. And it goes to Xavier. UAB really has gone stone cold from the three-point and inside. They've, they've got some good shots, JP. Just haven't been able to get any to go down. Walker, not only some good first shots, but some good second shots after all. Got a couple of rebounds. Kramer fouled him in the backcourt. Jack Kramer's second foul. Well, they haven't had much out of Kramer today. Just a couple of points and a couple out of all is Gene Barto. You can barely hear him as well on the other side because he came in here not very healthy either. Came in late last night, practiced in Birmingham. Barto has really taken this team from scratch, and he's been very, very successful. They've averaged 21 wins every year. Seven years in a row, only three other teams have done that for seven years in a row at the NCAA. Davenport drew a foul as he drove underneath the fouls on Rodgers. Albert Rodgers gets all ball. What he does do is he fouls with the body. Help side is excellent by the youngster Rodgers. Davenport too quick for Kramer, but Rodgers playing it very well. 223 remaining in the game, and Xavier trailed by eight in the first half. They had a trail from a similar margin earlier against MCC rival Loyola earlier this week, but beat them. They won their last couple of games here this week in the conference. Marquette, that was a big game before the largest crowd to ever see an MCC regular season game, better than 14,000 in Milwaukee. Aug is in, Rembert will go out. 
As you mentioned, big win. Marquette played a very good basketball game. Kevin O'Neill doing a fine job up there with that Marquette Warrior team. And Xavier uh, could have lost that one just as easy. Davenport at the line. You've got to have some luck as well as skill to run a 10-game unbeaten streak going. And Pete Gillen admitted that yesterday. There were some games that he thought that they could have lost or maybe should have lost. And those were two of the games that he had said Marquette they could have lost Loyola. What you call being on a roll, J.P. And one of these teams will have their streak snap because Birmingham came in at that as well, UAB, with seven straight. Bearden, three more. And all of a sudden, he has got caught as well. Kramer fouled Tyrone Hill. And that's the third on Jack. At this point in the ball game, not a bad foul by Jack Kramer. Stops the clock with 2.06. Right now, trailing 15 and cold from the outside. You have to do something. You start with stopping the clock. Well, that puts them in the bonus situation, puts Xavier in the bonus, but if you're going to foul somebody, it's Hill. Tee time hasn't been as effective from the free throw line. He's shooting only 60%, but you know, in all four years here, that's the only stat that has fluctuated. He's gone up in his field goals, he's gone up in his minutes, his percentages, his points and his rebounds, but free throws have still been up and down. They're up right there. 11 points for Tyrone Hill. Not necessarily uh, scary if you're a low shooting foul shooter. If you can step to the line in situations like this and knock him down. He knocks him down and knocks him dead. He gets a couple. Tyrone Hill with 12 points. Playing with some composure, too, with those four fouls. Both big guys really have shown improvement from last year to this year. Kramer will miss it. Pete Gillen said yesterday, shot selection, they've improved on. Their defensive maturity has improved. You could see it, especially if you saw them as freshmen. Walker. And Hill's a homegrown player from Cincinnati. Strong comes from Los Angeles. Strong. Kramer, great hustle to win that ball. Beard in the alternate possession goes this time to Pete Gillen. So, J.P., if you had one thing to say about what happened to UAB in the second half, it went very cold from the, the field. They got some good shots. Defensively, they did a good job. They create situations like this by hustling. They're on the floor, both Kramer and Beard. What happens to them is they don't have the arrow going their way. And they never recovered, did they, Mike, from that 10-2 spurt that Xavier had earlier at the start of the half? Went cold and went something like 10 for 28 in the last 10 minutes. Xavier will play it with a minute 27 to go. This is the best start that this team has had. The 10-1 starts since 1958 when they won the NIT championship. They finished 19 and 11 that year. So not as good the second half, although he shows no signs of slowing down. This is a four-time defending MCC tournament team, and they're picked again to win it. MCC opponents. Fellow league members have to be happy that they're not playing the tournament here. Xavier really confident when they play at home. Here's Strong. We didn't get any attendance figure. We were told yesterday that they had an advance of 7,500. That's above their average. They drew better than 8,500 in back-to-back -back games earlier. Walker and the pass down low. Hill missed the shot. Strong up there. And it was last touched apparently by Og underneath. 50 seconds to go, and Xavier can say that they've won 11 straight. It's been a long second half for Gene Barto. Certainly has. Gene is into this ball game every second. Really gets drained after a ball game. How many guys can say they're in two Hall of Fames? He's in one in Missouri and one in Alabama. After all the stops Gene has made, all the games he's coached, you would think that he would take it easy, not Gene Barto. He's in it every second. Start of the year, he and Bob Knight were tied for most wins among active Division I coaches. First appearance for Dave Miner, and I was just speaking, wasn't I, of Bob Knight. And here's a transfer from Indiana, who played for this club last year, is eligible to play in the seventh game of the year. Aaron Williams getting set to check back in as well. 47 seconds left. There's Williams coming in. Tyrone Hill will sit out. Pete Gillen's going to make another switch. Wilson will come back in. Dwayne Wilson, number 52. So Derek Strong getting a chance to be rewarded by the fans. They're on their feet for Derek Strong. And he had to be one of the top players out on the floor tonight. His stats may not show it. 15 points, and he had to be in double-figure rebounds, but he got the tough points and the tough rebounds when Hill was in foul trouble. And this man. I was going to say, Derek Strong and this man in the second half opened up that inside with his perimeter shooting. 
Tell you, you need the outside so you can establish that inside, JP. That's his 20th. Davenport's been able to do that. Keep the defense honest. And when they've been in the man-to-man -man situation, it's been he that's been on Kennedy. Look at the concentration of Davenport at the line. Even though this one's out of reach now, Davenport has 21. Coming back now, it's Wilkerson, 78 to 59. 19 point lead. Kennedy. This one was a close one through the first half. Kennedy missed. Williams took it. Going long. Walker. Nice score. You know, you had said to me at the start, this should be a close game unless UAB can't hit their threes, and you proved to be prophetic. They had missed from the outside and too many breakaway shots for the Musketeers of Xavier. Walker. Gave it up to the trailer. Oh, that felt good for Williams. He almost took the rim down. The score, when you read it tomorrow in the paper, will not be indicative of how tough a game it was through three quarters of the afternoon. Kennedy underneath will lay it up at the horn. It should count. That should give you AB 61 points for the other side. 82 for his neighbor. They've won 11th grade. A seven-game win streak has been snapped in terms of the University of Alabama. But Pete Gillum's team has got to be very happy, and MCC rivals better beware. Big win at home against a intersectional rival, a team that's on top of their league, UAB.